Welcome back to this two-part video tutorial where we're exploring stereoscopic capture for Matthew and Animator. If this is the first of the two videos that you're watching, then I recommend going back to the first one and watching the setup that we did. Now we're going to start uh, recording some footage and then processing it using the toolset that Epic provides and then ingest that footage into Unreal Engine where we're going to create Matthew and performances. So without further ado, let's start with part two. So we need a calibration board in order to calibrate the two cameras. You can find this pre-made calibration pattern in the stereo capture tools folder that we downloaded from Fab. It's in the calibration app folder. I'm also including this image in the tools that you can download from my Gumroad seen in the first video. So you want to print this image on a sheet of paper. Be very mindful that the squares have to be exactly seven and a half millimeters in width. Next, let's plug in our USB-C cables into our two cameras and then remove the metal caps. We're going to turn them sideways so they record in a vertical resolution. And then, as I said in the first video as well, we're actually going to use the included clip-on magnet holder for the cameras. So let's align them like this, like an M, and then bend the top one slightly to an angle and place them like this. And since they have a magnetic connection, this setup is actually more stable than it perhaps looks. And this is the end result that we're after. And if you already own a stereo mounted head camera, of course, then this step is obviously not for you. When the cameras are connected, head back to OBS Studio and right click on the top camera. Go to blending mode, then screen. By doing this, you can now very easily see if they're aligned or not. So what you're aiming for here is to have the middle part of your nose directly in the center of the image and then turn the cameras back and forth until your nostrils, the black holes in your nose, are perfectly aligned. That's what we're aiming for here. Also, the top camera should be facing directly towards your nose and the bottom camera would be at an angle slightly pointing up towards your nose so you see more of your nostrils. Let's record some footage and this is what your top camera should look like. Also, please remove any headwear that you might be using, such as uh, glasses or long hair, like I have here. It's better if the performance is just of a clean face. Preferably without a beard as well, but it's difficult for me, of course. After you've gone ahead and recorded both the performances, as well as the Matthew and Animator calibration video, when those recordings are completed, make sure to record a 20 second calibration clip with your calibration board. This should be a 20 second video of you holding your board without obstructing the pattern, going up and down and side to side, covering the entire image area. Make sure that you don't go out of bounds in either of the cameras. Around 20 seconds should do. Right, so now it's time to process the footage that we recorded. So let's hit Windows plus R to bring up Run and then search for CMD or just run the terminal. So from here, you can just copy and paste the commands that I've written in the text document that you can download from my Gumroad. So the first thing we're going to do in the terminal is to create a virtual environment. We want to do the entire process in just like a self-contained package, so to say. Then we need to activate it by using the second line, which is this one. When you see a MH tools in a parenthesis, then you know that you have successfully activated the virtual uh, environment. Next, we're going to install all of our dependencies that we need for this conversion. So let's go through them one by one. So this will basically go ahead and install everything that we need. However, I've already installed all of this previously before doing this tutorial. So for me, it's going to say that everything is already installed and the requirement is satisfied. But for you, it's going to do like an installation. So just go ahead and input all of these commands here to install all of the dependencies. And let's continue after that. 
All right, so before proceeding, you can check the MH Tools folder in Windows that the terminal has created. If it exists here, then everything is working great and we can continue. All right, so the way I've built my conversion scripts that you can download from Gumroad is that you have one that converts all of your performances and then one script that converts to your calibration video. So in order to have the least amount of work, I've made sure that you only need to rename the folder for the calibration clip and not for the performances, if that makes sense. Like if you have 20 performances and you only have one calibration clip, then you only have to rename one folder instead of 20. So let's find the recording that contains the calibration clip with the calibration board. Let's rename the source folder to calibration, making sure that the first letter C is a capital letter C. So next we're going to run a script that finds the calibration video and then converts it into image frames. It's going to ask you if you want to input a two line command instead of one line. So just go ahead and click yes on this one and it will start the conversion of your calibration clip. When the terminal comes back to MH Tools, then you know the process is finished and we can continue. So you can now go to the output folder in your calibration video and you will have a new folder called calibration and here you will find the top and bottom cameras. Next we need to create a calibration file from this calibration video using our calibration app that we downloaded from Fab. Now in order for this to find your calibration video, you need to input your own folder name here. So I tried to make these scripts as generic as possible. However, I didn't find a way to get away with this folder path. So you need to replace this path with the date that you recorded your calibration video. When you've gone ahead and replaced this folder path with your correct path, we can copy and paste this text into the terminal and run it. Hopefully it's going to detect your calibration board in the video and then find suitable frames in order for it to extract information and create a stereoscopic calibration. When it returns the MH Tools line once again, this is completed and we can go ahead and finally convert our performances. Now, depending on how many performances you have shot, this could take a while, but if you only have one or two, then it should be fairly quick. So this is the third and final conversion that we're going to do in the terminal. So during the second conversion that we did in the terminal, the script created this calib.json file. And you need to manually copy and paste this file into each take folder that you want to use in MetaHuman Animator. So let's copy this file and go to the output folder of any of the performances and then paste it into here. Now from here, it's actually not that different from the regular iPhone MetaHuman Animator workflow with a few caveats to catch along the way. So I'm going to show you these now. First, we need to create the capture source. Let's call this capture source underscore the date of the day. Instead of live link archives, we're going to select stereo HMC archives instead. Let's find the file path to your MHA folder on Windows. Now, the main thing that differentiates iPhone footage from our stereo footage is this minimum and maximum distance sliders, as well as the depth resolution. It would make sense to use the full depth resolution. However, with my tests here, I've actually found that lowering the resolution works better and increasing the max and minimum distance also works better. But I guess that you have to play around with these values in order to find what works best for you. So I'm going to demonstrate what happens if you just leave it at default here. Let's go to Capture Manager and find today's recordings. Select your footage and then hit import. After the footage is in ingested, we're going to create a MetaHuman identity. Let's call this MetaHuman identity and the date of today. Let's open this up, create components from footage and select our MetaHuman calibration footage. So as you can see, by using the full depth resolution, there's a more intense jittering going on with the depth 
and Matthew and Animator can't use this footage because it's too noisy. So we need to go back to the capture source and refine the parameters in order for this to work better. So it should see a complete face here. So I'm going to lower the minimum distance to only two, increase the maximum distance to 40 and lower the depth resolution to a quarter. Let's save. Go back to our caption manager and then re-import the footage once again. Now if you open up the Metahuman Identity, it should load the previous settings and you should also now see a more complete face. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to be 80% or higher. So even though my mesh, like you can see here, looks a bit weird, this actually works great. So we can set our neutral poses looking forward and side to side. Let's do a Metahuman Identity Solve. Wait for this to load. Select a body and do Mesh to Metahuman. And when this is complete, the final thing to do as always is to prepare the identity for performance. This is the most processing intensive task, so be patient while this loads. Cool, so now we have everything to start creating our performances. So let's right click, create a Metahuman performance. Let's jump into the asset, select our performance footage, select our newly created Metahuman identity. You can select which camera to track from. I'm going to select the top camera here and uncheck skip diagnostics for the process to run a bit quicker. It's going to go through and create the performance from your footage. As always, let's export a level sequence from this so we can manipulate the keyframes further. I'm going to remove MHP from the file name here. Just hit create. And here we have our newly created MetaHuman performance. Let's open up the level sequence and have a look at our performance once again. Now you might need to do some minor cleanup here. And as always, it doesn't work perfectly with the tongue. That's something perhaps that I should have been more aware of when shooting the footage itself. And as always, you can select all the keyframes in the sequencer curves, right click, go to filter, filter the curve based on the FFT, choose a frequency like 0 0.7, 0 0.8 or 0 0.9, do a high pass and it will smooth out the keys a bit, removing some small uh, jittering that you might have from your performance. All right, super. So I know this was perhaps one of the most technically advanced tutorials that I've done, where the chance of missing a step or doing something wrong is slightly higher than most of my other tutorials. So if you have any issues during this entire process, please let me know and I will try to help out as much as I can. I know that from experience, most of the issues comes from incorrect file paths and folder paths, not installing Python in the correct location and etc. So just let me know if you have any issues with this. And also feel free to share if you shoot any cool footage using this, either with the Opspot Meet 2 cameras, or if you own a proper stereoscopic head-mounted camera. I would love to see that. And if you really like what I do here on YouTube, then you can now become a member of this channel to get some exclusive perks, like voting for my next tutorial, and even requesting personal tutorials, if that's of any interest for you. So you can read more about it down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. And goodbye.